Hey guys, this is Eric. Uh, today I'm gonna show you guys how to get more torque out of your hobby Outrunner Motors. Uh, basically this trick I'm gonna teach you guys is not, does not require any additional hardware or other components uh, because it involves just re-terminating the stator phases. So it's not actually rewinding the motor but it's just re-terminating the ends of each phase and the result is you can get a little bit more torque um, and it'll, it'll drop your RPM a little bit. So I'm gonna do this using a Turnagy SK3 AeroDrive Outrunner motor. So this is a, uh, takes four to five S, it's a 32, sorry, 530 kV, uh, 42 millimeter diameter. I think it's just a regular, you know, airplane, airplane brushless Outrunner. And I'll be using this for the demo, but this should be able to be applied to other brushless Outrunner motors that are uh, of similar type. So yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna explain uh, pretty briefly the difference between a delta and Y termination. So all these brushless outrunners uh, in the hobby market are normally three phase motors. So essentially there's three large resistors that are um, have current running through them and they're the ones that are contributing to the rotation of the motor. So, but those three phases, essentially three really long wires can be um, put together in different methods and the two main ones are delta and y. So in a delta winding each end of the phase are tied to the other ends of the phase. So the beginning of, of phase A is tied to the end of phase B and the beginning of phase B is tied to the end of phase C and so on. In a y winding the one end of all the phases is tied together while the other ends of the phases are your outputs of the motor. So these three dots are your outputs on this winding and these three are your outputs in this winding. So you can see it's a pretty simple change, um, but it does involve undoing the delta winding to make the Y winding. So we're gonna be, again, going from delta to Y. Uh, the delta one winding is more common in brush start runner motors, and it essentially provides higher RPM and lower, but lower torque than a Y winding. So in comparison, delta is higher RPM, lower torque. A Y winding is less common, and that's why we're gonna have to switch from here to here because it, it is sold off the shelf like this. Uh, and these are less common, but they do provide higher torque and lower RPM. So if this is what you want, if you want higher torque, this is the type of change you want to make from here to here. Uh, the formula that is very important is that the voltage across the delta phase over root three is equal to the voltage across the y phase. So if you multiply this to this side, your y is going to be having a lower voltage, but that contributes to a lower RPM, but because the power is the same in both motors, assuming you use the same power source when you change the winding, your current will go up um, and your torque will be higher. So again, you're exchanging our torque for RPM and the factor by which that changes is root three. So you will have, if you have a uh, 500 kV motor, then 500 times 1.3 will be the kV of your sorry, times 1.7, times root three, will be the KV of your new motor. And I'm gonna show you this using real data on basically the RPMs that this, that this outputs in delta phase winding versus Y winding. There you go. All right, so the next step of this part is gonna be actually measuring the RPM of the motor uh, before I do the modification. That way, after the modification, we can really compare the KV change um, and make sure we did everything properly. So my setup here is I have a Vetter ESC, or two Vetter ESCs, I only need one of them though, um, hooked up to a regular, a regular receiver, a two channel remote, um, and these ESCs are a little bit different because they are capable of compatibility with this GUI that allows you to read cool real time data like current, temperature, and RPM. So, and this is gonna be useful because now we can actually measure the RPM. So, Powering these ESCs, instead of a battery, I have a power supply um, that's set for 24 volts. So that's approximately 5S, I think, around there. So again, you can do this with your own, your own battery, your own ESCs. The difference is you might not be able to get this RPM reading. So I have everything set up. I'm gonna connect to my ESC, and now we're gonna test it out. So you can see it's spinning up. At full current, at full load, I'm only drawing about two amps, a little under two amps. 
Uh, and here you can see, as I change the throttle, what my RPM looks like. So again, at full throttle, my RPM is 80, 80, you can see it right there, 86,000 RPM. Um, but don't worry, that's not real RPM, that is electrical RPM. And the conversion from electrical to real RPM, in this case, is a factor of division by seven. So this is a 14 pole motor. So the electrical RPM happens at every pole, so you actually have 14 poles, or sorry, at every, I guess, set of poles. So you have 14, seven, you know, seven, <laughs> hard to explain, but basically you need to divide the E RPM by seven in order to get the real RPM. So that number right there, or sorry, that was there, 86,000 divided by seven is approximately 12,000 RPM, which makes sense because if we're powering a 24 volt motor times 530 KVs, boom. So pretty close. 12,700 versus 12,300. There you go. All right, confirmed. And now we're about to make that go down by root, or sorry, yeah, down by root three. So this divided by root three is what we want. 7,000, so not bad, from 12,000 to 7,000 RPM. At full speed, no load. All right, let's send it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take apart the motor. So you see this little C-clip pre-retaining ring on the front of the shaft. I'm gonna use these needle nose pliers to pop these off, and then you can release the can. The next part is a little bit easier. You just should cut off all the bullet terminals, remove all the insulation, and separate all your phases. We will jump to that now. Okay, so now I've separated all three phases into the six ends, and I've used a multimeter to check which two ends belong to the same phase. So you can see yellow is one phase, red is another phase, and green and blue is another. So now that you have your three phases, again, you're gonna take one red, yellow, and blue, and put them, ground them all together, or con connect them all, and then the other red, yellow, and blue will be the three wires going to your ESC. So instead of these three wires being a combination of the three phases, you'll just have the single yellow, single blue, and single red coming out of the ESC. The six phases are pretty evenly spaced. Um, so what you're gonna do is the three, you'll notice that out of the six phases, all of them originate closer to the inner diameter of the stator, except for this one right here. This one starts on the outside of the stator, as opposed to all the other ones on the inside. So, you're going to pick that one, and then the two other ones that aren't of that phase, that you know make the 120 degree triangle, and you're going to take those and all guide them out of the motor. So that's going to look like this. So now these three are the ones I care about, and these three I'm gonna tie together. Got it? So again, take the one phase ending that starts on the outside, pick the two that are 120 degrees apart from that, and, tie all, and bring all those out of your motor, and then the remaining three will be tied together into essentially like your ground. All right, let's do it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've burned and sanded the three phase ends that I'm tying together, and I've just kind of twisted them together. Um, and so now I'm just gonna solder it and then cut off the excess, and that way I can still package this uh, pretty low profile little nub still inside the housing of the motor. All right, so now I have finished the Y termination. You can see the phase ends all are joined here and I heat shrunk this so that I wouldn't short with anything else and then my three 
other ends of the phases just come out with bullet connectors that I'll use to connect to my ESC. So let's test it out. I hooked up my re-terminated Y winding motor to the same setup as before. Um, I have my software running here, so I'm gonna test out the new max RPM. So here we go. Fifty thousand. Let's do some quick math. We had the 530 kV motor. I changed the winding, so now it's a Y winding divided by root 3, 305. 305 kV times 24 volts, that many RPM. That many RPM times the ERPM value, 51,000. Oh my god, it worked. There is scientific evidence that we have now reduced kV and the therefore RPM by root 3. Good luck guys. I hope you like my video. Bye.